Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am sitting here um, babysitting a very slow sale and it's gotten me to think about things and what do I want to do with the rest of my life and do I want to retire? Is it time? And just things like that. And uh, I thought I would just turn the camera on and chat with you guys a little bit and see if that maybe helps me. I have a lot of things that are stressing me out. Um, you know, it's funny that when we accomplish something, like for me, that, that move that I made to here is, uh, I mean, it was huge. I, I don't know how I did it. I really don't. I know that I was determined and that I knew I did not want to live in a house that was going to fall apart on me and I didn't want to fix it up and I didn't want to shovel anymore. So I guess, you know, I just did it. But when I think of the stuff I had to go through, all the calls I had to make for the transport for my mother, and then we ended up flying her, and then she went into hospital. You know, it's just, I don't know. I don't know how I did it. And But we would think that going through something like that, oh, you know, the next things that come up, that's a breeze. If I can do that, I can do this. But no, you know, it's just like, it just, uh, life still sucks. Let's put it that way. <laughs> the move did not solve the things that I worry about because I worry about everything. And now that I don't have to take care of my mother and I don't have to worry about the house, I mean, it's even sold. You know, these are big things off my shoulders. But the thing is, is that it's what I was used to. I don't know how to live without the burdens and without the turmoil. And, you know, and, you know, and it's just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to do with myself. I really don't. I cannot say that I'm happy. I'm not a happy person. I'm still convinced moving here was the right thing to do and it did relieve that kind of stress but now I have brought on all new stress things about um, retirement and how to best protect my money and I you know I don't have health insurance and I'm so scared something could happen to me and my earnings that are to take care of me if I ever want to retire and then go to Derek could all be just gone with a stroke or, you know, needing long-term care, gone. That makes me sick to my stomach. It makes me sick. So I worry about things like that. And then I worry about my health and I have things going on. First of all, I have a kidney that I had issues with. Uh, two different things. A cancerous mass that was taken care of supposedly, but I need scans for five years and uh, I was due last fall, didn't have it. Um, and then um, stones that they told me was because I was eating just meat. And now I've come to find out it might have been the blood pressure meds that I was on that I'm no longer on because I don't have a doctor. So, <laughs> but anyway, the kidney stones, that was a nightmare of a thing. They removed them, they came back right away, and they said they'll never go away on their own. I was supposed to have a second surgery, and I insisted I was not going to. Didn't care. Let those stones kill me. I don't care. And they magically disappeared. Magically disappeared. So, um, anyway. Oh, anyway, I, I, I'm so stressed over everything. I really am. Um, can you tell? And now immediate things that I have going on. I still have these bad teeth in my head. In the back, you guys know, I had gone to a periodontist. He was late. He made me wait for an hour and 10 minutes, said he forgot about me and spent zero time, maybe 10 minutes with me. I couldn't ask questions. I didn't know, you know, I felt like I didn't get an appointment. They ended up giving me my money back for the consultation. And I went to a, another place. Now the other place was more expensive, even more expensive than the very expensive first place. And you know, it doesn't dawn on me to shop around, but now I'm learning, shop around. So I just wanna give you the price of just the implant. I would go here, well, I have a space back there that I could have an implant put in. Just the implant, which is the little um, post, um, I don't know, it's like a screw or something inside the gum, and then later they put a post on the top, and then you have a crown. Just that thing that they implant for the first place, 1943 And we're talking, I was talking about like $11,000 if he did those two, and then this one 
I'm not, I don't think I'm going to be doing this side. Um, but I want teeth in my head. I don't want a partial. I don't want a bridge because I, I want to be able to chew. So I'm really wanting to try implants. 1,943 for just the implant. The second place I went to, just the implant, $2,000. $725. Is that fucking insane? I mean, I thought almost $2,000 was a lot. $2,725 for a screw in my gums. <laughs> and I need two of them on this side. Three if I want to go with this one. And so, um... I left there saying, yeah, let me think about it. And then I called my regular dentist and I was like, look, is there any place cheaper? Because this is ridiculous. And she said, yeah, you could do the, the um, Memphis Dental School. And I was going to call them, but I said, I'm going to just try at least another periodontist. You know, uh, I don't mind going... But the thing is, is you don't know if you're going to get the same person. You know, for something like this, I want, I want one place. I want to get to know the people who are doing this shit to me. Because it's a three to five month process. And uh, so I called this place. Uh, they had a lot of reviews on Google. Almost every one of them good. It was like just a little shy of five stars. And she was very nice. And I told her, I said, I am price shopping. And she says, you're going to find that we are the most affordable. And so I asked her specifically about the implant, and uh, she said, uh, I'm sure you got all kinds of prices. I said, well, yeah, and then we're only getting worse. She says, well, ours is $9.95. $9.95. Now, the dentist said she thinks that the, the dental school, she thinks that their implants are $7.50. So I'll go with $9.95 and go someplace that I can, uh, you know, build a relationship with. And um, so I'm going on Monday. I was going Thursday at 11, but I forgot that that was my library craft class, which is only once a month and I'm not missing it. I only went to two. That was my second one and I enjoy it so much. So I'm going Monday at 1 o'clock and uh, hopefully... I, I don't know. I, I hope I like them and that I can just get this shit done. The other thing that I'm concerned about is my vision. My vision is getting noticeably worse, and I'm having a very hard time, no matter what I do for readers, to see my computer. And so I tried calling today. Uh, I wanted to call two places. One was closed because it's a Friday. And then the other one was opened. And uh, they didn't answer the phone, and there was no way to leave a message. So that left a just, ugh, I was like, uh, give me a break. So Monday, I have to make some calls, and I'm just going to price check. I want to know what it costs for, you know, a, a, an exam, not just, you know, reading the chart. I want them to, you know, look at the health of my eyes. So there's that. And you know, you know how I am with phone calls. I just hate it. I hate it. But hopefully I can get that done. I'm going to try to get that done this week because I need to. Now, and now for my health, my general health. I do not have insurance because I cannot bring myself to pay over $500 a month for the premium with a high deductible and uh, a coinsurance. It's just crazy. So... I'm just going to need to find a doctor and self-pay. You know, just... It won't cover, like, scans and things like that, but I at least want to get my blood work done, you know, and <laughs> have my blood pressure checked, things like that. So I have to call around for that, too, and say, you got a price list <laughs> for the things you're going to do to me? And, um, you know, so that, that bothers me. It, I, I just can't wrap my head around the fact that I pay a lot <laughs> for income tax and I'm paying all those taxes and then I have to pay a whole shitload if I want insurance I, insurance health insurance is the biggest ripoff I mean it's just to me insurance should be I'm a woman this age and um, this is the rate women your age pay <laughs> you know? 
not go by how much money we make. It's like being punished for making money and taking care of your own retirement. You know, I just, I don't know. So these are the things that stress me out. I think about it constantly. I wake up and I'm in so much agony when I wake up in the middle of the night. And I, uh, I just, I have always said stress is what's going to kill me. It really will because I, I can feel myself slowly dying because of stress. And I, I feel like I am falling apart. Um, you know, it's just, there's only so much stress you can take. And, you know, it just gets to me. It just gets to me. Um, is that enough on my list? There are other things. <laughs> A lot of other things. I'm even trying to think about what I want to do for work. I mean, I know I don't want to give up YouTube. As long as I can do it, it would be crazy to let go of this. I have taken a big step back, and I really needed to do that. But the thing is, is that's a big chunk of money that's gone because I'm not recording as much as I was. And my sales are slowing down, and I almost think this fabric business has run its course. I did it in the early 2000s, and I'm usually good for about five years with a business. And uh, it's been about six that I've been selling fabric this time around. I don't want it to be done because I absolutely love ordering fabric, looking at it, um, you know, online, my wholesalers, and being excited when something new comes out and getting it and just looking at it. I love it so much. And then selling it, but it's to the point right now that I have more fabric than I'm selling. And I, you know, I usually just really am good at rotating my stock. And, uh, and I buy a lot. I spend about two to 3000 a month on fabric, and that usually sells. But now the past three or four sales have slowed down a lot, and so I have a lot of leftovers, and I don't like that. And I don't think I want to invest the time that is needed to try to promote it more and do... I'm trying to do what I can. I don't want to let it go. So, I don't know. Just a lot on my mind. And I thought I would share, huh? Are you happy that I did? <laughs> I just have a lot on my mind. And uh, I don't know what to do. I, I dread. I dread going to bed. I'm so miserable when I go to bed and I uh, think of things. I try all different kinds of ASMR to get my mind off things. and But then I feel like I'm just not doing the stuff that I need to do. I need to be planning my fucking life and not listening to ASMR or playing a fucking knockoff Wordle. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just going to stop talking now. And I'll be back with more soon. Bye.